After the harrowing case with Jeffrey Schaefer, Alex crosses back. And this time, the killer is even more particular of how he wants things done. In a string of bank robberies that occur in the D.C. area and Virginia, the killer, known as the Mastermind, requires every robbery to go in a specific way, to the exact minute and second. Who the Mastermind is is incredibly difficult to pin down because there's no set pattern as to what the robberies entail. Sometimes people actually do get killed in the robbery, and other times nobody is harmed at all. And every team that is assembled for these robberies is mysteriously killed with some form of poison. So Alex has a really hard time finding out who this person is, and there are many twists and turns to where you think it's one person, and it ends up not even being them, but they are somehow still affiliated with the case. In book seven of the Alex Cross series, Roses Are Red, Alex is incredibly stressed out trying to find out who the mastermind is. There's almost no trail to go for that leads to who the mastermind could be. And so it takes almost all of his energy and all of his time to be able to find out who this person is. And then there's all these different hangups that happen that cause the case to be pushed back further and further, resulting in more deaths and more robberies. Unfortunately, with all of this chaotic mess happening, Alex also, along with all of this, is suffering from very serious personal problems. His relationship with Christine can, starts to crumble down and he's not even sure if it's going to end up lasting, which is incredibly heartbreaking for me as a reader because I was really wanting him to continue a relationship with her, but after what happened in the last book, it's incredibly difficult for me to even begin to understand what she was going through. Essentially what happened in the last book, Pop Goes the Weasel, Christine was kidnapped and was held hostage for almost a year. And in that time, she was pregnant with Alex's child and gave birth while she was in captivity. In this book, it's really hard for her to be able to move past that and be able to deal with the fact that Alex is a homicide detective and things like this will happen. It seems that with every book James Patterson continues to come out with in the Alex Cross series, the cases just get crazier and the killers just become more manic and just insane. And there are so many twists and turns in this book alone that just make my head spin. The very last chapter of this novel blew my mind because one of the characters that you would expect to be one of the best characters in the entire novel does a complete 180. My head is blown. I can't even begin to understand how this person could be this way. And it threw such a monkey wrench into the entire story, but it makes it so enticing to just start the next one but I know I need to wait until I at least get this video uploaded for me to be able to read the next novel. Once again James Patterson has an amazing ability to create incredibly devious characters and just these amazing plot lines and is really able to connect each novel with each other in different ways and continue to just make the reader feel like they can trust Alex and really root for him in all aspects, whether it's his relationships with people, whether it's the case he's working on, the relationships he has with his children and with his grandmother. You just really root for him throughout the entire series and you don't ever feel like you can't trust the man. I know I said in my October favorites video that the last book, Pop Goes the Weasel, was probably my favorite book out of the two, but now it seems like Roses Are Red is my favorite and this is probably going to happen throughout the rest of the series that I read these books that every book that I read I'm just going to love it more than the last and that's what I really like about Patterson's writing. With every novel he comes out with in any series he writes you just continue to love the next book as you progress through the series and it makes it difficult for you to be able to pick a favorite book out of the series because each one was just so captivating and so crazy and intense and you just can't really pick a novel per se which is better than the other. That's gonna do it for my review of Roses Are Red by James Patterson. The next book that is going to be is going to be Violets Are Blue. What I really like about James Patterson is every novel of his In the Alex Cross series plays on a nursery rhyme. There's the very first book was Along Came a Spider, the second was Kiss the Girls, which, then it was Jack and Jill which was a nursery rhyme, and then it was Cat and Mouse, Pop Goes the Weasel, Roses Are Red, and now Violets Are Blue. I just really like how he's able to use these innocent nursery rhymes for his titles because it 
just gives it kind of a more kind of innocent feel, but you really know that it's a mystery, intense thriller. It's just a really interesting concept for me. But so all I know about this one is that there's murders going on in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, killings that look more like the work of savage beasts than humans. Local police are horrified and even the FBI is baffled. Then as Cross is called in to take on the case, the carnage takes off, leaving a trail of bodies across America and sweeping him to Savannah, Los Angeles, or Las Vegas, and New Orleans, as his nemesis, the merciless criminal known as the Mastermind, stalks him, taunts him, and, once again, threatens everything he holds dear. So thank you guys so much for joining me in this book review of Roses Are Red by James Patterson. If you guys enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already and you'd like to be, hit that button down below and subscribe to become an owlet in our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye, guys!